In this video, I'm just going to model how you might go about describing or summarizing a distribution that you've created or that you were given. And in doing that, I just want to point out the three or four big things you really want to touch on when you're describing a distribution. And that those are the shape, center, spread, and any unusual features, which would probably include an outlier or outliers. So here's our example. It says the biologist Ronald Fisher collected 50 samples of the flower Guinness iris, and he measured their petal lengths. Below is the histogram that represents the sample, and we're asked to describe the distribution. So what I'm going to do is first just let you know the type of things I would look for when I was reading somebody's summary of a distribution. So first, the shape. So when we, we talk about the shape, we want to use words like symmetric. I'm actually going to zoom in on this just to make this clear. We use words like symmetric or skewed. But we also want to talk about um, if there are any, uh, if there are many humps or just one hump. So words like unimodal, which we've described before and defined versus bimodal, if there is two modes. Okay. When we talk about the center, we'll want to report the median or the mean. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to point out that you're, you'll mention the median when your data is um, skewed, okay, for reasons we've talked about before. And you'll use the mean if your data is symmetric. Now, sometimes you can't really tell exactly what the, these things are, so you just do the best you can to describe them. The spread would consist of the range, if you can figure out what the range is, or roughly what the range is, uh, the IQR, meaning the interquartile range. And again, you'll, you'll, des you'll describe that if your data is skewed. And um, if you can, or if you're given the standard deviation, you would mention that. But again, that's that would be if your data is symmetric. And then for unusual features, Unusual features would include clusters or outliers. Okay, just an, an unusual data value that you might you might believe doesn't belong there. So let me just model how I might go about describing this distribution. So the first thing I think I would point out is that this distribution looks like it has two humps. So I would describe it as bimodal. All right, so again, there's no particular order in which you have to describe the features I just mentioned, but it it looks like there are two humps. So I'm going to I'm going to start by indicating that. I'm going to say this distribution is bimodal with two main clusters. Now I'm going to talk about these clusters individually. It looks like I've got a left and a right. So I'm going to say that the left cluster and the right look pretty symmetric. So let's write that. Both clusters are pretty symmetric. And um, let's talk about their centers. It looks like the left center, the, the left cluster has a center of around 1.5 centimeters. So let's note that. With the left cluster, having, now I'm going to say median. We, we can't get the mean, the mean because we just don't have, we don't have the individual data points and we don't, we weren't given the mean. So I really have to just kind of ballpark what I think the median is, the middle value. So the left cluster has a, has a median of about, looks like 1.5 centimeters. And the right has a median of around 
I'd say about five centimeters. Okay. Okay, so I've talked about shape. I've talked about centers here. Let's talk a little bit about spread. Um, I'd say like the overall range for all the flowers, remember range is highest minus lowest, the overall range is about, now again, you're no, I'm using nuanced language because we don't know the, the exact details, but I'd say that the, new, the overall range is about, well, it looks like we've got seven at the high end and uh, 0.5 at the low end. So maybe about, you know, six and a half to seven centimeters. And um, now maybe we'll talk about the two clusters separately. It looks like the left cluster that probably has a range of about, I don't know, it looks like from 0.5 to 3 centimeters is about where that peak ends. So it has a range of about... Let's just let's just say two to three centimeters. And the right cluster, I'm kind of running out of room here, so let's make this a little smaller. Uh, the right cluster has a range. It looks like that distribution goes from like three to seven. That, that cluster there, so it has a range of about 4 cm centimeters. Okay. So, I've just at this point, let's take note. I've talked about the shape by indicating it's bimodal. I've talked about the two clusters separately, which is recommended if you have two, two clusters. Maybe treat them as, they're, as though they're different. Um, so I've talked about the shapes of each of those. I've talked about their centers using the medians, and I've talked about the spread by indicating the ranges, okay? And um, I guess the, the, the last thing I'll point out is whenever you have a distribution, this is kind of an unusual one, but I did it on purpose. Um, whenever you have a distribution where there's two clusters, or that's bimodal, that usually suggests that you looked at, uh, you looked at a sample that really represents two distinct groups. So in this case, I, I'm going to indicate that the two clusters is unusual. This is what I mean by unusual features. It doesn't look like there are any outliers in either of these peaks. So I'm going to say um, the two clusters uh, is an unusual feature. Um, and I'm going to just, I'm going to suggest that this sample probably came from or consisted of two separate species of flower. Okay, it looks like we have two clusters, meaning there are probably two different species of this Guinness uh, iris, and that's probably what's representing these two different peaks. So we probably should have studied them separately. So I'm going to say um, this sample... probably consisted of uh, two different species. Which should be analyzed separately. All right, so I've touched on all the, the big four things I mentioned. Now, everybody's words are going to be different when we do a problem like this. So just, just bear in mind, you really just want to touch on the key, the four key things here when you're summarizing a distribution. Shape, center, spread, and any unusual features.